Okay, I have literally taken what was supposed to be a, I think, 20 pound turkey, uh, but once you put it in the oven, once it thaws, you pour out some of the water, and once you put it in the oven, it cooks out, as you can see, this much water. There's a lot of, there's a lot of juice in there. I took a 20, what was supposed to be a 20 pound turkey, and I'm, I'm fitting it into um, seven jars, three, four, five, six jars, actually. A 20 pound turkey in six jars. It cooked down real nice. I cooked it overnight and it looked beautiful. Um, and I'm saving the bones so I can make broth. I, I boiled the, well, I, you know, simmer the, the bones, chicken, turkey, whatever, beef, for two days, overnight for two days, and I make broth. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And I got a lot of the meat in there. As you can see, I'm stuffing the meat down in the jars as far as I can get them. I don't want, you don't want to stuff too much, especially when you're pressure cooking, because um, the inside will probably take longer than the outside, and that's kind of dangerous. So don't stuff too much. I'm kind of pushing it down in there the best I can. And when you lift it up, yeah, it's under that under that ring. Okay, so I could add. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the juice um, to. I might have to mix it with water. I don't. Know, I might have enough juice. I'm gonna add the juice to the jars and. Can you imagine what that's going to taste like? <laughs> okay, got to go. Okay, so it looks like I had enough juice to put in each jar. Still might add a little water maybe to the ends of them, but I have enough. Get a little bit more here. So I could take this without being disastrous. There we go. All right. Just wanted to take y'all on my journey with me. Okay, I'm going to bring it over here. See, that juice is going to be good in there. And it's coming up. Yep. And I'll keep adding juice. Okay, I wanted to get a shot of this before I do anything else. I'm getting ready to put the turkey juice in, which you can see I got him pretty good. But um, I just want to get a shot of this way it looks when the, the light, you know, um, you can see just how I stuffed him with the turkey meat. So. There you go. That's a whole turkey, guys. It's a whole turkey, believe it or not. And I'm getting ready to put the uh, juice in. And I'll be back. Okay. And I put the juice in. I'm going to debubble it with this. This is called the debubbler. You stick it down in there and de go around, make sure there's no bubbles in it so your jars won't break. And they look like. Yeah. I had enough juice for all of it. That is really good. I didn't have to add any water to it. That's filled to the brim. I have them. This one's a little high. I have them about one inch from the top. And this one's taken a while. As you can see, there's hardly anything. It's halfway filled with juice. But when I put juice in it, it um, slowly goes down. I guess it's because of the way the meat is put in there. Um, let me try to... Oh, yeah. I packed that tight. Yeah, there we go. That's got a lot of room to take some more juice. And, let me put this over here, and this one is pretty, I think it's good. Yeah, this one's up, that one's up to the, the rim. I like to go up to the, I wish I could point, there we go. I like to go up to the bottom of the neck. That's usually a one inch, one inch sign. You don't want to go up too high. So let me see something. Let me try. Okay, this Wait, let me wipe it off, guys. Sorry about that. Because I gotta. All right, this, as you can see, has measurements on it. I wish I want my camera to focus. I'm too close, I guess. Let me see if I can focus closer. No. But anyhow, yeah, one inch up on the left hand side, you can see. Then three fourths of an inch, then a half inch, and one fourth of an inch. Usually, when you're canning, you could go close to like most people go one inch, which ends up being. Let me put this on here, okay? You take one inch, and it ends up being put it on the edge like that. There you go. And wherever the bottom is, there's your one inch, okay? You got approximately one little over, little teeny bit over one inch, but not quite. As you can see, not quite the um, half inch. Am I right? Yeah, not quite the half inch. So that's one inch, which is usually the uh, neck. This part, the neck of the jar. 
you go up to about there and you're pretty safe guys all right so let me start the debubble and yeah they're pretty tight i might have to do debubble a bit much but i'll be back okay i just wanted to show you guys you could use a like one of these chinese chopsticks so you could use that to debubble with too so i just want to show you how i debubble you go down See those bubbles? Make sure there's no bubbles in the bottom of the jar. Some people overdo it, but I mean, you can kind of tell where there's, <laughs> where there's bubbles in the bottom of your jar. That one's good. Yeah. Then I'll do this one. It looks weird up close, huh? That one's good. Oh, that one's tight. Another way. Here we go. These bubbles up here will come out whenever the pressure cooker starts cooking. Starts, uh, starts. Ah. I'm wipe my. I continue to wipe my hands. Everything's pretty greasy. Cause I cook, I bake, I cook my turkey in um, butter. Well, I I canned butter too, so I used my canned butter. I just heated it up in the microwave and poured it all over the turkey last night before I put it in the oven. And man, that turkey came out excellent. Excellent. No bubbles. Let me keep that meat down. All right, keep it down in the juice. Debubble this one. This one's a little looser. That's good. Let's see, bubbles in the bottom. Okay, deep bubble. I forgot if I did this one. I think I did this one. This was a tight one, right? There's no bubbles in the bottom of this one either. Nope. Let's see. Okay. Keep that meat under. And. Me. Deep bubble in this one. All right, let me deep bubble this one. Ah, wipe my hands. There we go. Okay. No, no bubbles down in there. And now what I'm going to do is um, wipe the rims. You wipe the rims of your jars with vinegar. This is probably why all my videos, you see my vinegar is still sitting back here, right? You wipe your jars with vinegar and paper towel or something. Then you put on the lids. And they are in the pressure cooker. Now I just wait uh, 60 minutes when you have already cooked meat. Meat is usually uh, 75 minutes and fish is uh, 90 minutes. But this is already cooked meat. So I'll leave it in 60 minutes or so, you know. So God is good. And by the way, my daughter and I did have a portion of that turkey. I forgot to tell you that. Right. And my turkey, there it is. You hit a pop. <laughs> my turkey is done um, it, cooking in its own buttery juices I, in fact I made it with the butter that I canned my own can, canned butter so I think let me see that one sucked in that one's sealed that one is sealed 
I believe that one is sealed. That Yeah, I put a rubber gasket on this one because you can see there's a dent right there. When you use gaskets, it saves your lids. And that one's not sealed yet. But of course, that's an old... I think it's the last time I'm going to use that um, ring because it's old. It's seen its days. I like them, though. I think they look antique. But you don't leave them on when you put them on the uh, shelf, though. Because if you leave your ring on while your food is sitting on a shelf, it could have a bad seal. It could open up and you wouldn't even know it opened because you got you got the ring on. The ring, you know, is covering it. So that one is not sealed yet. That one is sealed. As you see, they're still cooking. Is that one? Yeah. And I think, I can't tell. So this one, I'm going to take that sticker off here, but it looks like, I think this one's sealed too because it's not raised up in the middle. It looks flat. Yes, yeah, so I have one. Uh, just one. I need. I have one. I think that one's sealed too. I have one that we're waiting to pop. And we shall see. But that is my turkey. And as I said, this is a whole turkey. Um, my daughter and I got a couple pieces this morning. Um, just to taste it. It, it, it. That turkey was so good, guys. I left it on last night. I put it 6 o'clock in the evening. I put that turkey in the oven. All I did was pour butter on it and put some what we call Scott seasoning, you know, mixed seasoning in a container that we do. And I did that, and I put it in the oven 6 p.m. last night, and I cooked it on one, let me think, one, 175. Yeah, because I didn't even want to go up to two. I cooked it on 175. Um from 6 p.m. till 6 a.m., 6, 6 a.m. this morning, 12 hours. And what happened was when I opened it up and took the turkey out, it was kind of light, you know. And uh, it, it cooked beautifully. You could tell it cooked beautifully, but it didn't have like that crisp on the outside. So then I turned, at 6 p.m., I turned the stove up to 340 it was. It was supposed to be 350. I just didn't feel like messing around with it. It's up about 340. And I cooked it for about another eh, half hour, 45 minutes, and boy, it browned up beautiful. And you know what? We didn't even have to use a knife for this. My daughter and I, we actually ate it, uh, just cutting it with a fork. I wish I could have got better slices, but that's all right. I got it in pieces. It's turkey in its own juices. So what you do is let it sit um, as long as you want to. You could, you'll have, I'll have this for about five years or so. Some people have kept their, their meats up, their food up like 10, 15 years. And then a grandmother dies and they go into the house and they find the foods like this, jarred foods, and they still eat it and everything's fine, you know. But what you do is when you have meat like this, um, take it off this shelf, bring it out, make yourself some um, a baked potato or some mashed potatoes or rice or something, and um, heat that up. Heat it up good about 10 minutes before you eat it. Every time you eat something from canned goods, make sure you heat it up first before you eat it, just to make sure, you know. Um, no botulism or anything. Of course, with the pressure with the pressure cooker, I don't think botulism is much of a problem. But just to make sure, cook it for at least ten minutes and pour it on top of your rice or your potatoes or mashed potatoes or whatever. And that is, as Beretta used to say, that's the name of that tune. God bless you guys. I love you. Thanks for showing me some attention. Thanks for watching me cook. And we're done. And I forgot to tell you that my daughter and I did eat some of the turkey this morning for breakfast, and it was really, really good.